It seems like the new current trend in football right now is just to make brand new leagues. In the last couple weeks, we've had the European Super League, but before that, we had the proposal of the Better Liga. Let's give you the lowdown. This would become the first cross-national league that would comprise of both Belgian and Dutch clubs. Therefore, merging both the Eredivisie and the Belgian Pro League with 10 Dutch clubs and 8 Belgian sides. An 18-team league that a lot of clubs are keen on and talks are underway, it's possibly set to launch in 2025. Now, there's a lot of reasons why the Benna Liga is a lucrative offer and could potentially happen in the future as it will help gain more money for du both Dutch and Belgian clubs. It could quote-unquote essentially become the sixth league in Europe. We all know we have the top five right now, but Belgium and Netherlands, they want to combine, join together as one and be part of that top six conversation. And another major factor behind its formation is that it can help the Dutch and Belgian clubs become more competitive in tournaments like the Champions League and Europa League. Now, with all that out the way, I've tried to create the Benna Liga in Korea mode as realistically and as true to the proposal as possible, we're going to join both Belgium and the Netherlands in this one league in the Eredivisie, considering they only have 18 teams, and that is how many teams are going to be in the Benna Liga. Think of the big boys in both of these countries. They're pretty much all on board with this idea and a part of the Benna Liga conversation. For the sake of this video and for the simulation, we're going to be controlling Ajax. Now, as much as there are benefits to the Benna Liga and the possibility of it actually happening, there are a lot of downsides and negatives to this current situation. Like, what happens to the rest of the teams that don't get to go in the Benna Liga? How is promotion slash relegation from this league going to work? It presents right now a lot more problems than it does solutions. But it's a fascinating idea for the time being, especially as we get to see it play out in FIFA 21. Now, here's a look at the whole entire table. Clearly, it's still known as the Eredivisie, but we've included the best Dutch and best Belgian sides. I've tried to stay true to that 10-8 split as much as possible, but we've got AZ Alkmaar, Ajax, and Elect, of course, our boys Royal Antwerp, Charleroi, Club Bruges, Robin's team, Groningen. As we move further down, we've got FC Twente, Utrecht, Feyenoord, Genk, Ghent, Mechelen, PSV, Standard Liège, Vitesse, also known as a home away from home for Chelsea's low knees, Willem II, and Heron Veen. The downside to this is that only one team can qualify for the Champions League every year, and they have to go through the qualification process. But we're going to see a lot of these teams in the Europa League, but let me know down in the comments below, are you for this? Do you like the proposal of the Benna Liga? And what if it actually happened in real life? Who would win the league? League, would it actually make you want to watch this league even more if you don't already watch the Eredivisie in the Pro League? I'm not going to change anything up here with Anderlecht. I'm going to let Vincent Company, my assistant manager, play things out. I won't make any big money transfers. Let's see how this club adapts to life in a new league, a new system that could change European football forever. Thanks to the economic stability this new league provides, this could be one of the most exciting leagues to watch go down. And here at the end of Season 1, let's see how it's all shaped out with our controlled Anderlecht in ninth, literally smashed smack bang mid table as we scroll up towards the top it is actually AZ Alkmaar to win in a tight title contest between AZ and PSV they won by one point with a total of 82 collected they get their berth in the Champions League meanwhile PSV Ajax and Real Antwerp finish in the top four so far the Dutch clubs are dominating with the top three being Dutch we've got Royal Antwerp and Club Bruges the highest ranked Belgian teams and further down we've got Genk Feyenoord against and our boys Anderlecht in the top nine got a bottom feeders Herenveen sitting in 18th right now Utrecht and FC Twente make up the bottom three now thanks to the results of us switching all the clubs around the orange Becker has become not only the battle of the best Dutch teams but the best Belgians in the knockout cup format we've got PSG winning against Royal Antwerp in the final 2-0 second versus fourth what a showdown and it's gonna prove to be an exciting competition to check up on it year after year now the newly formed league we've created isn't going to affect the champions again Europa League this season but here is how Ajax performed rock bottom of their group in four finishing with four points it's a poor showing for some reason Heronveen has qualified for the Europa League I don't know what I did wrong in terms of the setup but they finished bottom of group E just like they finished in the Benna Liga bottom of the table Utrecht also were drawn into group F alongside Arsenal and Nice also Braga but they ended up in third Feyenoord actually topped group G which is quite interesting unfortunately their European run ended there losing out to Rao so she had added a four to an aggregate in the round of 32 now here you go the top goal scorers the golden boot winner in season one of the Benna Liga he's going to go down in history it is Carlson of AZ Alkmaar with 20 goals in 34 matches he outscored Klaus from Standard Liège with 18 and also his fellow teammate Myron Buadu with 16 Haller and Tadic were up there with 15 goals and 14 apiece also Daniel Milan, the runners up PSV with 14 and Bas Dost out at Club Bruges with 12 in terms of assists it was Club Bruges Sabol with 11 being the main playmaker Daniel Milan up there with 8 also Carlson the top goal scorer with 9 Dusan Tadic also 
also made his way into the top 5 with 7 assists and in terms of clean sheets it was Stecklenburg for Ajax with 16. The veteran is still killing it and getting his golden glove. Now I'm really skeptical that any of the top transfers this year actually were involved in any Benaliga clubs. The financial and economic benefits of the Benaliga haven't really kicked in yet so I doubt there is going to be any major movers. Oh well I was actually wrong but this time it is Ajax selling Masrawi, their Moroccan right back to Bayer Leverkusen for 33 million pounds. It looks like Ajax have been going through a clearance. They don't, they can't really keep a hold of their best players as Bayer Leverkusen are just snapping them up willingly. Daily Blind has joined the German outfit for 27.8 million pounds. That's all the transfer news we have to cover. Let's fast forward to season two. The sophomore year of the Benaliga Liga is wrapped up and it's a much better showing from our boys and elect. But as we scroll to the top of the league, we have the same old winners, AZ Alkmaar. They've protected their crown and they've gone back to back at Benaliga Liga champions. Proving themselves to be the best out of both Dutch and Belgian clubs, it's PSV again in runners up. Ajax selling a lot of their stars, but still forming a little bit of a title charge. Meanwhile, Club Bruges secure that top four, and it's still the three to one ratio of Dutch to Belgian clubs. The Belgians really need to up the ante as they are getting outshone right now in the new league. Genk, Antwerp, Ghent, and Vitesse all make the top half of the table. Meanwhile, as we scroll down, the bottom three include FC Groningen, Willem 2, and FC 20. Wooden Spooners, Heron Veen, finish up in 14th, so it's a major improvement on their part. And season one, top four finishes Royal Antwerp slump into seven. Here in the Better League Cup, I'm gonna rename it to we have the first Belgian winners in an all-Belgian battle. Club Bruges take it out on penalties 5-4 after it finished 1-1. It's unprecedented times here in the newly branded Orange Becker. What are we witnessing right now as both the semi-finals were decided on penalties as well? Now, did AZ Alkmaar qualify for the Champions League? We're gonna have to run through the groups and yes, in Group D, they finished rock bottom. It actually on paper doesn't really look all too bad as it was a very competitive group to start it on the very last day. And it's gonna be one of the tightest groups I have ever seen, but they don't get, they don't even secure Europa League football. They are just flat out knocked out of Europe. As top four Benelliga club Royal Antwerp actually finished in second with Group A. Interesting stuff for them, qualifying for the knockout rounds. The Belgians showing up in Europe. Club Bruges in second here in Group E. Could have knocked Spurs off top spot. And again, PSV finishing in second. So the Benelliga clubs at least qualifying out of the group stage. Ajax again, it's a common trend. They're all just finishing second here in the Europa League. As a round of 32, so Ajax knocked out 1-0 on aggregate to Lille. Club Bruges were eliminated 3-2 on aggregate to Wolfsburg and Gladbach got away with a 7-goal thriller 4-3 to PSV. And the biggest L out of all of them, it was a round 32 slaughtering as Royal Antwerp joined the Benelliga clubs eliminated 8-2 on aggregate by the Evertonians. It was nice to see them get out of the group stage but the way they were all eliminated in the round of 32 was just heartbreaking. Chiellini, don't say the famous line because it's not the history of the Tottenham. They win a trophy. Right now I present to you the top goal scorers, the Golden Boot winner. It is Sebastian Haller at Ajax with 17 goals in 34 matches. It's proven to be a tough task to score over 20 goals in this brand new Benelliga as Shone from Herenveen scored 15. Dost at Club Bruges with 15 as well as PSV's Gutierrez scored 14. In terms of assists, it was Max and Gutierrez both in the top two, but Max with 11 surpassed everyone as Anderlecht Sambi Laconga scored 8. In terms of the shot stoppers, clean sheets saw Bizot on top with 13 as he claims not only the Benelliga Championship but the Golden Glove. Now, are the Benelliga clubs actually spending money or are they selling their best assets? And it's more the latter. Once we look at the top transfers, Daniel Milan has been transferred to Olympic Lyon. He has signed on for the French outfit for £64 million and PSV have secured the bag. Who else were involved in some big money deals? We actually have PSV spending some money. £50 million for Gonzalo Montiel. The Argentinian right back joining the Benaliga club as they continue to pursue the title. Not only selling their best, but trying to buy and upgrade their team. PSV continue to be on that selling spree just like Ajax were in season one as Denzel Dumfries joins Leicester City for 37.9 million. Let's hope after three years of this Benaliga riffraff, we finally have both countries competing on the European stage. Also with the World Cup coming up, can their countries benefit from this league actually forming? And are we gonna see some more big money transfers, not just their massive sales? Can they keep a hold of their key assets for longer? Now with this brand new European league forming, we're about to find out come the end of season three. Now how awesome would it be to see a Belgian versus Netherlands World Cup final here in Qatar 2022, but the opposite has happened. They've been placed in the same group, drawn into group A. Belgium finished on top with six points. Uruguay snuck in second with five and Netherlands crash out of the World Cup with four points. Norway finished bottom. But what a coincidence that both the nations we're focusing on for this video were drawn in the same group. FIFA are working against us right now, but let's follow Belgium's route for the rest of the World Cup. They
they took down France 3-1, defending champions in the quarterfinals. They eliminated my boys Italy 2-1, and in the semis, they knocked out the three Lions 2-0, a comfortable victory to get their spot to earn their right in the World Cup final, and they went all the way. The Belgians have actually won 2-1 against Brazil, defeating five-time World Cup champions to take home the nation's first ever World Championship, I believe. Is it a coincidence that the formation of the Benelliga for at least two seasons now sees one of the two nations win the World Cup? At the end of the day, it's the Red Devils who have conquered the world, and Kevin De Bruyne, he worked his way up in the Belgian Pro League, he played in the Pro League, and this is their current national team setup as things stands. Bow down to your world champions. I'm pretty sure every single one of these players in the starting 11 got their start in the Pro League in the Domestic League of Belgium. Unfortunately, De Ketelardier isn't playing for Club Bruges anymore, so we can't say a Benelliga player has won the World Cup. But you kind of get the gist of what I'm trying to say. The Benelliga has improved not only domestically, but on the international stage as well. Belgium have benefited majorly. What a way to start off Season 3. World Cup news that, honestly, I was never expecting, so let's simulate towards the end of Season 3. Alright, Season 3's results have ended like this. Our boys and elect. I've done no signings, I've trained no players. They have finished champions with 68 points. I think that is one of the lowest points tallies ever to win the 34 game league. They had a lot of competition though. Ajax, Genk and PSV all put up a good fight. And like usual, the title challenge always goes down to the last day. First Belgian champions, not only of the Benelliga Cup, but the Benelliga League. We continue to scroll. It was Antwerp, Liège and Club Bruges to miss out on top for European football. Two times champions, two in a row. They, it looks like they have sold a lot of their players. AZ Alkmaar down in eighth as fine or just scrape into the top nine. We have the bottom half of the table to showcase for you as in the bottom three. It is Mechelen, Willem and Greningen who have found themselves staples in the bottom half of the table, unfortunately. Over in the orange Becker, AZ Alkmaar, they have never failed so far to not win a piece of silverware in this simulation. If it wasn't for their terrible league performance, at least they made it up in the Benelliga Cup, winning 2-1 against Ajax in an all-Dutch affair. The Belgian team that went the furthest was KV Mechelen, losing out to the eventual champions AZ 2-0. Alright, Chiellini, say those famous words. My Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. As two-time Benelliga champions, AZ Alkmaar qualified for the Champions League. They were drawn into Group A, a pretty tough one if you ask me. Comprised of Real Madrid, Benfica and Roma, they finished rock bottom and couldn't even salvage Europa League football. Here in the Europa League, where we see the most Benelliga action, we have the famous second place secured by Anderlecht in Group B. PSV runners up in Group C alongside Milan and FC Young Boys. Club Bruges actually break the second place curse in Group F, losing out to Peok Leverkusen and Rapid Vienne, finishing in third with seven points. And Ajax came out on top of their group, the first Benelliga club to get the first place finish here in Group H alongside Marseille, Zut, Wagrem and Victoria Blizzard. Over in the round of 32, the Belgians got knocked out and elect our boys 4-1 to Wolves. And in the knockout stages, Leverkusen have stolen the majority of Ajax players and it proved to be the point of difference as they won on away goals 2-2 on aggregate. PSV's actually broke Broken the curse and progressed to the round of 16, beating out Roma 4-2. They eventually saw the jaws of elimination against Wolves in a highly contested 6-4 aggregate battle. It looks like this season has seen Anderlecht rise from the ashes like a phoenix, as not only did they win the championship, but they also have the golden boot top goalscorer, Di Marta, with 24 goals. That is a better league record in 34 matches. Coming in second, PSV Zahavi with 17. He was clear from the rest of the pack. Over with the assists, he won with that as well, so he's not only the best goal scorer, but the best playmaker with 9 in 34. And clean sheets saw the Venezuelan Farines for Genk with 14, securing the Golden Glove. Now, considering how tight the league was this year and no teams were able to reach the 70s or 80s points margin, surely many of the superstars have departed the Benelliga, Liga, and that includes Sebastian Haller, who was up there in the goal scoring charts last season, and he's left the BVB. Borussia Dortmund snatch him up for 54.5 million. And another one bites the dust. Ajax is selling quick as Mohamed Kudus, the Ghanaian super talent in career mode. Again, is departing to Dortmund. These German outfits are just poaching the best talent from Ajax for 48.2 million pounds. And that wraps it up for the top transfer deals as Ajax clearance continues to take place. Onwards to season four, a Euros year. Let's see if Belgium and the Netherlands can make their impact on the international stage. And if Anderlecht can keep up this red hot form they have suddenly sprung into. The fourth season of the Benelliga has come to a conclusion and now we're starting to see the Belgian sides fight back. After their World Cup win in 2022, three out of the top four sides are all Belgian, and that includes our back-to-back -back winners and elect 75 points on top of the table yet again, alongside Genk in second, also Club Bruges, joining them for that fourth 
fourth and final spot is Ajax as PSV just missed out. Going down towards the top half of the table, we have Royal Antwerp just squeezing in there. And FC Twente with a remarkable seventh place finish scrolling towards the bottom side of the table. It is familiar faces towards the back end of Willem, Grinningen and Herenveen. They are the first team to do the double and like not only winning the Benelliga but the cup as well. In an all Belgian bout, 3-0 in the final against Royal Antwerp. I've never really touched this team. I haven't done any transfers, haven't improved the side in any way. It's just that after four years of being under Sir BCHD's guidance, they've finally found success. Last year's champions, Anderlecht Group F saw them drawn against Barcelona, Inter and Rapid Vienna. It was a rude awakening to life in the Champions League. They finished in third with eight points, so therefore that guaranteed them Europa League football. Meanwhile, the other Better League contenders in the Europa League were Group A side Ajax finishing in second. PSV also qualified out of Group D alongside Everton. And unfortunately, AZ Alkmaar, after they started off this simulation so well, unfortunately, they finished third in Group F, losing out to Lazio and Braga. Genk also followed the same fate, but this time it was a much more closely contested battle on goal difference. They lose out to Victoria Pleasant and get eliminated from Europe. In the round of 32, PSV are eliminated to Roma 5 through an aggregate, which is hard to watch. Ajax get completely rolled over by Frankfurt 4 0, and Belgium's Purple Crusaders march on to the round of 16, taking down Villarreal 4 2 on aggregate. In the round of 16, they also saw past Yatafe 3 1. This sees them as the Benelux Liga side who have traveled the furthest in Europe and they booked their semi-finals place against Frankfurt 3-2 defeating the German outfit and then in the semis they lost fair and square to Lazio 4-0 eliminated to the eventual champions of the whole comp. The top goal scorer the golden boot winner Bongonda from Genk with 21 goals in 34 matches he proved his goal scoring credentials against some of the region's best as Vlap, Engval and Bayo finished right behind him with 18 goals and 15 each. In terms of the assists we have another the gang player ruling the charts, but not ruling in terms of the league standings. Musa with nine. He also was tied with Vitesse's Broja and RC Anderlecht saw two of their players. Sambi Lakonga were one of them with seven. And clean sheets, the Golden Glove winner, it's Anderlecht's number one, Van Krom Bruges, with 12 clean sheets and 34. It is a Euro season 2024. We do have some international football to look forward to, and considering Euro 2020 just doesn't exist in FIFA 21. We had to wait up until 2024. Belgium drawn into Group A, a tough task for them as they face France. France, Switzerland and Romania but this time unlike the 2022 World Cup they are drawn into two separate groups they could potentially meet each other in the final or in a big stage game the Netherlands are in group B alongside Germany Norway and Austria I wouldn't be surprised if the international tournaments in the summer had an effect on the big money transfers let's see if any Benelliga club spent big or sold big AZ Alkmaar sold one of their main assets to Jürgen Kupermenias yet again the German clubs love shopping in the Benelliga as Hertha Berlin picked him up for 49.1 mil Aaron Veen also saw a major sale, a team that have usually finished in the bottom half of the league. Joey Veerman, the 25-year-old, 84-rated centre mid, has moved to Lazio for £40.8 million as we finally have our first set of buyers. The Europa League winners using their money wisely, but no other Benelliga spenders or sales have taken place. Now here's the end, the last dance we've simulated towards the end of the 2024 Euros, and let's see how it all went down. We don't have very good news as the world champions, Belgium, were eliminated in Group A, finishing in third. Switzerland beat them out by one point and France invincible on top. That is some very bad news as we take a look at how the Netherlands performed and was the complete opposite. Finishing on top with no problems, no issues. Three wins out of three, nine points. They are sitting comfy as big guns Spain were eliminated in the group of death. Group D saw Italy and England both progress through. Here in the quarterfinals, the Netherlands saw no problems dealing with Switzerland as they dispatched of them 3-0. It's the old-fashioned Euros layout, so no 24 teams. It was a semi-finals penalty shootout against Italy. What are with the Benelliga clubs destroying Italy on the international stage? They won 5-4 on spot kicks whilst it remained 2-2. And that means they booked themselves in an international final on the European stage against France. 2016 finalists, 2018 World Cup winners. What is about to go down as the Netherlands have a pretty similar situation to Belgium back in 2022. Fingers crossed. I hope it's the Netherlands. Honestly, Argentina crowned South American champions. We don't care about that as the Netherlands win the European Championship. They took down the French and in what was an epic victory, they emulated Belgium's success in the World Cup here on the continental scene. No fancy cutscene, but they have a nice shiny piece of silverware to add to their collection. A 2-0 comfortable victory in the final. And now both Benelliga nations have shown success on the international scene and have won both forms of tournaments. Now if that doesn't prove that the formation of a cross-national league from Belgium and the Netherlands is beneficial to 
towards the game, not only in the domestic leagues, but the international tournaments. Think again, because FIFA 21 have predicted some big things here. And some of their best players include Bergwijn, Daniel Milan, who was sold for big bucks in season two, Calvin Stengs, who was an AZ Alkmaar OG, and Graven Birch, an Ajax Youth Academy product. I present to you your European champions. Bow down to Leo Ranje, as that is going to conclude the Beneliga experiment here in FIFA 21 career mode. Let me know down in the comments below, what are your thoughts on all this? Who do you think won? Was it the Netherlands with their European win and also their Beneliga dominance? Or was it the Belgians, the Red Devils, who proved the world wrong and won the World Cup? Let me know down in the comments, but if you did go on to enjoy, make sure to drop a like down below, hit subscribe and turn on the notifications as there will be way more FIFA 21 career mode content coming your way. As always, I've been Sir BCHD, have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.